Hi, it's Gadget UK here again. Um, just doing a quick mod to this Spectrum Plus 2. Um, I don't either wear, but there's um, the HAL chip that's on there. It's like a programmable um, logic chip. Um, this isn't it, this is a GAL. Um, the one that's on there, I'll show you in a sec, um, there's a bug in the Spectrum Plus 2. Um, it's a known thing, where it doesn't really affect very much in terms of the software library. It's mainly some of the Russian um, sort of homebrew seeing stuff from Russian games and things that are affected by it. There are one or two commercial games I think that are affected by it, but it's uh, slim to none. You, know, it's, you could probably, I think the list is about, I don't know, several, maybe up to 20 in total tiles that are affected. Um, it was fixed on the plus 2A and the Spectrum plus 3 um, onwards. So, um, yeah, let's get this apart and I'll show you the chip. Right, so we're in there now, so if I zoom in, um, I think it's that chip there. So I'll just get that on camera, get the camera across a bit. Uh, there you go. So uh, yes, it's this chip here, which is marked um, HAL 10HBACN. I think it's got an Amstrad. It's got Amstrad on it. It's got an Amstrad part number 40061. Um, so as far as I'm aware, that's the one. I should be the same pin out. Yeah, it looks like it is. Number of pins. Um, and I'll put a link to this in the uh, you know the description of the video and stuff. What's impressive about this, uh, really? Well, I guess it's not that impressive, but it's still, I think it's, uh, it's it's pretty good that the the person who's done this um, identified the fix. There, it's, it's pretty straightforward. You have to put, um, you know, replace the chip. Obviously, there's just one wire, and the wire goes to one of the pins that was previously unused. I think it's probably it's one of the bottom corner pins. I forget which one it is. I think it's probably this top top left pin here is not used. Um, but uh, it just happens that it's one of the programmable pins on um, a GAL, um, and I think GAL he recommends to use as a 16 um, V8. Um, I've used a 16 V8D. These uh, vary in terms of the uh, speed of operation, so um, I'm hoping that that's fast enough. Um, I've only got a one megahertz clock on here, so uh, or is it three and a half? I, f I forget actually. It might be three and a half on spectrums. Um, so anyway, um, yeah, I'm going to give this a try. Um, the first thing to do is just get this chip off there and socket it. So whilst we're having a look at this uh, Plus 2, there's a couple of things I thought I'd show you here. Um, I've got a new power supply, I've got a separate dedicated Plus 2 power supply. Same thing as I showed in the 64 video so recently, you know, check your fuses. 13 amp fuse, fire waiting to happen potentially. Um, the other interesting thing with this is that you can see the neutral there uh, is a bit close to my liking to that screw that's held the thing together to the point where you know it's been squashed down by the upper part of the case and then pressed against the screw head. Um, so I'm not happy about that, so I'm going to um, shorten that I think, um, or at the very least just squeeze it into a position whereby it fits inside of the plastic uh, housing there. It doesn't get squashed by um, you know the, the lid, but I will certainly change that, take that fuse out, put a 3 amp in there. Um, you're not going to need more than a 3 amp um, for something like this. So hopefully you can see there, you know, that I shortened the uh, live and neutral by a fair amount. There's a little bit more than that actually on the, the live, uh, I did it in two little bit, two bits. Just because it doesn't need to be very long, um, it's still perhaps a little bit too long there, but it's, it's okay because um, this will fit, you know, if you look at the way that is, um, that'll fit quite nicely on there without putting any pressure, as you can see on those cables. And then the final bit is just make sure you've got a, a reasonable amount of distance up here um, on the uh, sleeving um, and tighten up the screws that hold that so as you can see that's pretty snug and that's what you want, you, you don't want it to say it wobbles around and it was loose before um, but most importantly a nice new 3 amp fuse in there now uh, and that black one, just have a look at that, it's a bit tarnished you, know, you can see it's um, oxidisation or something has got on there, it's turned a funny colour but yeah, uh, anyway, that's safe now so let's give it a try so as you can see, you've got the chip off there now. Um, chip's fine, no damage to the pins or anything. Um, I've got a socket, it's a 20 pin um, dip, so I've got the socket on there. Uh, if you're going to do this yourself, make sure you, you're not working off carpet, um, as I do. It's not that This is not the right way of doing it really. There's risk to damaging some of the components on here with static. Um, and uh, really, I should be wearing an anti-static wrist strap. They're only a few pounds, so get, you one of the, get yourself one of those off eBay as well if you're going to do this yourself. Or if you want to work on these boards at all. Um, anyway, I'll just quickly show you uh, me resoldering that on there. Uh... 
So there you go, after cleaning up, you can see it looks pretty good there now. Um, so I just need to get the um, the chip in there, I program the chip, I'll do that in a minute, I'll show you just briefly. It's dead straightforward, it's just a case of sticking it in the program in the right way, loading the JEDEC file, it's a program, and perhaps do a verify. Um, that's it really. I tend to do a verify before I do the program actually, just to make sure you can read the, the chip and the chip's blank. Um, but before I do that, I'm just going to straighten up the pins. Um, the only need slightly straightening, really, from the, the removal of this chip, and just plug it back in, just test it, just make sure it still works. So I've got the chip, the original chip back in there now, so I'll just put the power in and I'll just show you this working. Right, so it's not a conclusive test because obviously I'm not testing load or anything, I've not got the keyboard connected. But um, it certainly boots okay, so I'll just swap the chip over. Um, I'm just going to put the um, GAL in there now. So I'm just programming the GAL chip here. Um, you need to load the JEDEC file um, into the software. Um, and uh, should be good to go. Um, you've got to make sure you obviously get your pin, your chip around the right way with regards to pin one. So there we go. It's just a case of it in program after you've loaded the JEDEC file, and uh, it's all done. So I've got the gallon there. I've not got the fixed wire that goes, needs to go to the CPU yet for the additional pin. Um, but I'll just show you if I connect the power up. <coughs> and there you go. So um, it's not, you know, it's not, it's not broken. It's not caused any irreparable problem there. Um, that is working as far as I can see at this stage. Um, there's, there's just like I said this fixed wire, and I think it goes from the top left pin there, I'm not sure, I can't remember, but we'll have a look in a sec at that. Uh, the main thing is that's working, and the original PAL chip um, I can just keep as a spare, I guess. And being curious like I am, I want to see what happened when you've not got one of these in, um, and that's what you get at checkerboard. This incidentally, it's a bit like um, the, um, sorry I keep filming the Neo Geo there, um, the MVS, you can see it's looking pretty sweet with the voltage display and everything there. But uh, anyway, so I can sidetrack myself. Um, the, this chip is a bit like the PLA in the C64. I mean, there is probably other logic and other stuff going on there regards to the address decoding on Spectrum. But effectively, that's you know it's part of the backbone of the system there. I think regards to the address decoding that hal. So um, there, yeah, there you go. It's interesting to see. I like say you get checkerboard if it's not there. Uh, anyway, I'll get that wire on there and I'll show you the diagram. Right, here we go. Um, I'm not sure how well this is going to focus. There's a bit of a glare there. It's a bit glossy, the screen. Um, see how close I can get before it blurs. Yeah, that's about as good as it's going to get, I think. As you can see, this is the original chip here, the HAL. Um, and the bottom right-hand pin there, pin 11, um, has got NC, no connection. Whereas the HAL, uh, sorry, the GAL 16V8, um, if you zoom in there, you'll see it's connected the refresh pin um, there to that last pin that was not used. And that's where the, 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 the problem lies in the logic. He's actually um, nicely put the um, uh, equations below there, so you can see the original ones that are captured from the original chip. Um, from, you probably put these in a program or something and just read them that way. Um, there was a bug related to that, um, that pin. Um, I think it's mentioned somewhere, I can't see where the hell it is now. Yeah, there it is, refresh. It's to do with the RAM refresh, sorry. You can see just above my nail there, not refresh. It's got an extra condition there. So just one or two of the conditions have just changed slightly, particularly that one, I think. Um, he's commented it as well, actually. Disabled address to contend, uh, sorry, I can't bloody read it. Disabled address to contended RAM in refresh cycle. Stop raining. So I think that bug is actually known as the raining bug because you get sort of raining display sort of little lines or dots or something come down the display when it starts to crash and you, ultimately you get a crash from it. Um, so as I say, I'll put a link to this, you can see there it's uh, Velosoft at specy.cz um, but it was really good of that guy to make this public this way. Um, it is a simple fix but still, it, you know, it took a bit of effort there for him to do that and get it on his page and everything so and um, it's useful. Um, I didn't need to do this as I say, and you don't really need to rush out and do this to your spectrum but I'm a bit of a completionist in that sense. I like to, you know, if something's not right, I like to try and fix it if I can. And this one's an easy one. If you've got an EEPROM programmer, you'll find that most of them will do gal chips and things as well. So it's easy to get one of those uh, off uh, somewhere from, uh, I don't know, your local electronic stockist, or you could try eBay. Um, they're about three or four pounds individually. I think you can buy them in bulk cheaper than that. Um, although some of these gals now are quite hard to get hold of because uh, they're no longer manufactured. I think it's a lattice chip, isn't it? Um, but uh, yeah, in this case, this one was about three pounds. It cost me 
Um, so I'll get that wire on now, show you where it goes now. Uh, I think you might mention it on here actually. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, it does, bottom of the page there. Uh, yeah, for this gal, you must connect pin 11 of the gal, which is the pin I've shown you, the new refresh one, to uh, the refresh pin on the CPU, presumably pin 28. Um, so it's from pin 11 to pin 28. All right, let's give that a go. So there we go, it's uh, let pin 11 on the gal down to pin 28 on the CPU and we'll just confirm that with a multimeter from the top side. So the meter's on continuity here, uh, just test it, seems to be working fine. So pin, you've got pin 1, it's down here, and it's 20 pins the socket, so you've got pin 10 up here, that's pin 11. So from pin 11, CPU, same thing, starts from pin 1 there, this one's 40 pin, you've got 20, that's pin 20, 21. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. Yeah, so from pin 11 to 28, got a short, that's fine. So I'll put the chip back in there and give it a try. So I thought I'd just have a go at uh, Hot Wolf. Just wait to see if the loading screen comes up. It's interesting, you can tell when it's actually loading an image. You know, if, you've, if you're experienced to using a spectrum, it's like after a while you can tell when an image is loaded versus data. Um, I can anyway, I can, it's just from years of use of these things, I can tell when it's actually loaded. Um, an image is ready to display as a title screen, for example. Uh, it's a bit more difficult with uh, some of the fast loaders and turbo loaders and stuff like that, but you can still tell. Um, anyway, I'll cut now to the game having loaded and we'll uh, have a play of Hot Wolf just to test this out. There we go, so it's loaded. Uh, sorry about that light blur that's on the screen there, I'm not sure what the strongest one. But you can see it, it's like here somewhere, I don't know, it's weird. Uh, anyway, let's turn this up a bit. Not sure if there's any music at this point. I am having problems with volume on this, I've got it. I've specifically ordered. Yeah, I can hear it now. Yeah, how fuzzy it is. And I spotted the same, there's another YouTube viewer here. Uh, I can't spot left his channel. If I lift the spectrum, here the noise goes. Um, so, yeah, you don't want to play this on a carpet. I think it's because of the lack of earth, in, you know, the power supply is not earth. I think that's what it is. Um, you might even have more success loading when these things are not on a carpet, um, which I found quite interesting. Anyway, I'll plug the uh, joystick in here, um, and I'll try and support this off the ground. I'll just put it on the table, actually, I think, if I can. The camera might wobble a little bit while I just move this, so just bear with me a minute. Yeah, so that's off the floor now. Joystick just about reaches. Uh, let's give this a go, Sinclair, number two. Ain't going to be able to reach a grenade, so it's all going to be purely bullets, this. But as I was saying, I've ordered a stereo audio mod for this. Now, if you look back at my Atari ST mod, it's identical to that in many respects. It's the same type of audio chip, you know, the PSG or whatever it is there, but a white chip. It's the same as the, in the ST, well, not exactly the same, it's pretty much the same. Um, there's a couple of differences. Um, but, so the point I'm trying to make is you could do that manually, you, know, you could separate the three channels, just like you did in the ST, and uh, handle, handle it that way. But, one of the things you've got to take into account is the 48k sound as well. Um, and I want two to be balanced. And the, the guy in Finland who's done the, uh, I think it's Finland, not the Iceland, that's not sure now. Um, the guy who's done the audio mod, uh, and I will do a separate video for that once it arrives. Um, as, you know, spend a bit of time just making sure that the audio is pretty well balanced there. Um, and it's clearer. You don't get some of the background hiss and stuff that you get here with this, um, as it is at the moment. So that'll be interesting when that comes. It's a really good conversion, this spectrum. I'm amazed you know, at how well this came across, the speed of it, um, the number of sprites and things. It's, uh, it came across really well. And, uh, but you could hear there the, the difference between the 48K sound and the FM sound, you know, from the other, well, the FM is whatever way it, the, the uh, Yamaha chip uh, outputs there, the YL, whatever it is, it? Yamaha, I forget what it is, isn't it? AY, the AY chip. Um, so that stereo mod should give a good balance, you should be able to hear the um, 128 music a bit better. 
um, but it's nice stand at the moment, it's not that great. Um, I'm using a uh, composite cable, uh, I'll just quickly show you. As you can see, uh, I made my own composite lead for this, and I did revert the audio, you know, originally I had an audio lead coming out of the DC jack as well for the tape, and I've reverted back to using the, um, uh, you know, the Discman adapter there, so I can connect it to a CD, and in actual fact I'm using my iPod at the moment, just a first gen iPod and that's working fine and the reason I did that is because um, well I didn't really like having leaving the heads disconnected um, it just seemed a bit of a fudge fix you know um, and there's even more background hiss you know the sound that you can hear now the distortion you know noise in the background there there was a lot more noise when you had that that lead flying out the back there and I guess it's because the length of the lead was picking up um, you know noise because um, it's not designed, you know, the, the, that circuitry where the head's connected is not designed for a le length of lead that long with uh, the impedance or whatever it's got, you know, it's the resistance at the end of that ultimately. Um, so, uh, yeah, I did revert that back. So the only difference between this and the stock model now is the motor is disconnected for the moment just so I can use the tape there without it playing away. But um, I will reconnect that at some point, I think, perhaps put a switch on the back as I said. But I'm also using the plus two power supply which you can see down there as well. Anyway, thanks for watching. And I'll see you soon.